So when you first get your Tenkara rod, you're going to remove the plastic from the handle. And then the other first thing you're going to do, if you're going to be using our furled lines, is you need to put a stopper knot in the end of the lily and on the tip piece of your Tenkara rod. You want to be very careful with this tip piece. So when I do this, I keep it inside the rod. I can put my finger over this or just kind of keep it so that tip piece isn't coming out. Because if I bring it out and I pull against this edge right here, it can break very easily because it's got a pressure point that's hard and sharp. Now to tie the stopper knot, all it is is a basic overhand knot. Some people do a figure eight. You can do whatever knot. It just has to be a knot. So do an overhand knot. Remember keeping that tip in there so you don't break it. So you can kind of see that's the overhand knot and I just kind of move it near the end of that Lillian and then tighten it down. You can have a little bit of it string coming off the end. You just want it closer to the end so it's easy to put your line on and off of this Lillian string. So that's the stopper knot. Next we're going to talk about the Tenkara line. Our starter kits come with a foam wheel that holds your line. It's really nice because I can take it all pre-rigged to the water like this when I'm ready to fish, pull this off, pull my line off, and I'm fishing. They're also really nice. They're foam. They're not the best looking line holders on the market, but they're probably the most functional because I can cut slits in it anywhere on this line or this line holder. I usually cut about three or four of them and I can slide my line through those, those slits and it holds snug. It's not going to slip. And if I got a fly, if I want to be pre-rigged with a fly and everything, or I don't want to take my fly off when I'm done fishing, I can just take that fly and hook it anywhere on this foam wheel. I can hook it on the side. I can hook it anywhere on the face, anywhere. And they're really cheap, so I usually write the name of the line so I don't forget the length. And if you're using level line, I put the size. There's three, two and a half, three and a half, four. So I put that on there as well so I don't forget, especially if I have multiple lines. Then you can just pull it off when you're ready. Keeps all the kinks out of your line, keeps it from getting tangled being on this foam wheel. Now, usually with Tenkara, we use about three to four feet of tippet. That's the fishing line that comes with your uh, starter kit. And most commonly, people use four or five X, maybe even six X. Um, with our Hellbender rod, you can use three X for catching big fish. Um, but you'll take three to four feet of tippet. You'll tie a fly on one end of that tippet. And on the other end of that tippet, you're going to tie that to your furled line or your level line. At the end of your furled line has either a tip ring or a micro swivel. And you're just going to tie that tippet to the furled line using the same knot you would tie your fly on the end of that tippet. So for me, I use a Davy knot. Some people use a clinch knot or improved clinch knot. Whatever it is that you use to tie your fly or your hook on, you tie it on to this ring here. Now we're just going to pull this line off, with this foam line holder. On the other end of the furled line, we have this loop. 
And that's how we're going to connect our line to our Tenkara rod. So we can get our Tenkara rod out here. You'll notice on the end of our Tenkara rod, this tip section, there's a little string we call the Lillian string. And you're going to put a little stopper knot in the very end of that. And that's where we're going to connect our furled line to. To do that, we're going to open up the loop on the end of this Tenkara line. And then we're going to stick our two, stick two fingers, or a thumb and a finger through that line, opening the loop grab the furled line and pull it through that loop. What that does is it creates a slip knot. It's going to cinch down on that Lillian string, slide up that stopper knot so it won't come off until you pull the tag ends here. And then it's just going to come right off. So I'm going to show you how to do that really quick. First we take the furled line, get our two fingers through there, grab the furled line, pull it through that loop, and I'm going to hold that to the side, take our Tenkara rod, you want to be very careful when you do this, a lot of people, this is how they break their the tip on their Tenkara rod, they pull the tip out here and then try to put it on and they're pulling against the edge and it snaps, because it's pulling against a, a hard edge on this open piece here, with that thin section. So. You want to pull the string out, but leave the tip section of your rod inside the collapsed rod. And I usually just put my finger over it, so all I got is the Lillian sticking out. Then I take that loop I made, that slip loop, slide it over the Lillian, grab the other side of the Lillian, so it's over it, and just cinch it down then slide it up to that stopper knot. And see it doesn't come off until I pull those tag ends. So one more time. Open your loop. Grab the furled line. Pull it through the loop. Then get your Lillian out. Just the Lillian. Keep your tip inside. With your finger over. I usually use my index finger here. So I can use this finger and my thumb grab the other side of the Lillian after I slide this loop over, cinch it down, slide it up to the top of that stopper knot. Sometimes you'll have to move it with your fingers. And then you're ready to fish. You can just pull those tag ends to get it off, but it's just going to stay on there until you pull those tag ends. So usually I'll connect my line and then I will extend my rod. Now, when extending your rod, you want to start with the smallest piece first to extend. So I usually get my tip section out here, and I put my two fingers over the end of this rod, and I use that as the joints pull through those fingers. I'm going to just hold it tight enough that that pulls snug, not super tight, because you don't want it to be really hard to collapse but you don't want it to collapse while you're fishing either. So just pull each one snug as it comes through. I just pull that straight out. Each joint, straight out. And then to collapse it, you start with the biggest section first. Now some people have a tendency to hold with their hand like this. This isn't good because you can bend it, it, you have a tendency to bend it against the hard edge here, which really doesn't matter on these smaller, bigger pieces, but when you get to the thin pieces like the tip, it push, pushes against this hard edge, it'll break real easy. And so that's a common way some people, when they're new to Tinkar, break it. So just use two fingers over this, just a little above the joint, and just tap it through with a little force here. You can see just taps through. And if one of them just doesn't want to go in, just bring it out. Now near the joint, joint being right here, I grab on this side and I grab on this side of the joint, kind of close to the joint. 
and I twist one way with one hand and the other end way with the other hand. So this one twists in this way and this one twists in that way and then I push them together at the same time. Twist and it goes in. So again, twist them opposite directions and push the two sections together at that joint really close. And you can usually get most st stuck joints unstuck. If it gets too stuck, just get something that you can grip each section with, like the liner from your cabinets, that grip liner. I usually just take some of that, and hold it on this end, hold it on this end, do the same thing, twist opposite directions and push together. Collapse your rod. When your rods collapse, I put my finger over the end of this to protect the tip. Grab that tag end, pull my line off. Get my foam line holder. Wrap it up. For storage. Some people think this is a reel. There is no reel in Tenkara. This is just your line holder. Put that in your bag or wherever. Now I want to show you something about our zoom rods, our, our Hellbender rod and our Komodo rod and some of the rods we're working on have a zoom function which allows you to fish it at diff more than just one length. So this is our Komodo rod. It's a 10 foot 4 or about 10 foot 5 rod at its extended length but it also allows you to zoom down this verse, first section it comes down here and you twist it and it locks in it locks in the butt cap and also it fits really snug here at this section that allows you to fish it at a nine foot section so that first section on many of our some of our rods will lock and it doesn't have to be super tight it's just got to lock Sometimes you gotta twist it a little bit to get it to slide over that. Sometimes when you get your rod, it, it can be kind of tight for the first little bit. Now when some people get their 10 car rod, they're brand new, they pull it out of the box. The first thing they do is tilt it forward and let the section slide out. That's the wrong way to do it, I just showed you the right way. And when you do that, sometimes a big piece comes out first and then two small pieces slide out together and get stuck behind that big piece and then they try to pull it out this way and they get them more stuck and break something if you accidentally do that the best thing to do put your tip plug in here or if the pieces are stuck and sticking out just leave it out turn it around unscrew your butt cap here put this aside and pull I usually pull the handle piece off just start with the biggest one down to the smallest till I get down to where the stuck sections are and I can pull them out the back end of this piece a lot easier in fact you can't pull them out the front they're just going to get more stuck so I just pull them out the back and this is the same way you'll clean it you can pull all these sections out biggest to smallest and then these last two sections on our dragon tail tin car rods commonly don't come apart um, but you'll just clean, to clean them just get some water wipe them down you might even run water down the middle of these other sections let it dry I usually put them somewhere where they can stand up so the gravity gets that water out of there when it's dry and I put them back together I start with the smallest pieces slide it into the next largest piece or the next larger piece and you can tell that there's two ends of these sections one's bigger than the other end so you want to make sure you're sliding the tip of this section into the butt of the next section. You can tell the butt because it's kind of a it's a rougher looking finish than the rest of your your rod or some of our rods have a colored section that's your tip so the butt is the rougher looking end 
and you'll just slide the tip of the smaller section into the butt of the next section. And you'll want to clean your rod. If you get any grit or dirt, you set it down the dirt, you want to clean that out because if it gets dirt particles or sand in between two sections in a joint, it can create a weak spot and bust and you'll be like, my rod broke and uh, it must have been something with the rod, but it's because you, you didn't treat your rod well and you got it dirty. And so it's a good thing to clean your rod every once in a while, especially if you've set it down in the dirt or you've gotten it dirty. And put it back together and you're good to go. Just gonna kind of show you some of the casting here really quick. I always wear sunglasses when I'm doing fly fishing of any sort because I do not want when I'm whipping this fly around for it accidentally go in my eye. Plus, the polarized glasses make it very easy to see structure in the water or even fish. So quickly here, I'm going to connect my furled line to my Tenkar rod and you can see here how easy it is when you're pre-rigged to be able to go from your car to set up to fishing. Just like that, I am ready to fish. That's just super quick. You want to keep your elbow close to your body. About, I use about a fist away. About a 12 o'clock to a 10 o'clock. Hard stops. I usually kind of, kind of give myself a pattern for casting. I do, I count it out kind of like, I just give myself a up, stop, down, stop. Up, stop, down, stop. That stop on the up allows you your line to load and then you, you just kind of want to have some energy on that cast as well up stop down stop up stop down stop and usually when someone's learning I tell them instead of having the tank car rod straight up and down I angle it just a little bit to the side that way your fly doesn't hit your tank car rod until you get really used to the casting I'm going to back up here Now if you're having some problems with all the lime piling all together in front of you, it's either you're not getting enough energy or you're bringing the rod too low. You want to stop at that high so it can shoot that line all the way out. If you bring it down low, you're just pile driving it into the water all together. So just make sure you get that stop and don't go all the way flat like you would with a normal fly rod. So stop high let it shoot out. One of the goals is, you don't have to, but one of the goals is, is to get that fly to hit the water first so the fish notice that fly and not your line. Now you can cast upstream, follow your line back, or you can cast to the side and you just follow with your tip to keep, and you just follow with your tip to keep that line off the water. Hopefully you can kind of see this. Or, if you're casting upstream, follow the line as it comes back with your rod fish.